Hi. Now the techniques that we have seen in the previous videos, namely grid search, random search, as well as its extensions, so successive halving and hyperband, uh, they are limited in some sense. And that is that they randomly select the initial candidates that they are going to evaluate. So they randomly select hyperparameter configurations that they are going to try out. Now, you may say, well, if we have already evaluated a certain number of hyperparameter configurations, then isn't there something better than just to randomly select them? So, for example, we could maybe fit a model to our previous observations and then use this model to predict the most promising regions or the most promising hyperparameter configurations based on our history of observations. So this is the idea of sequential model-based optimization, or SMBO in short. So what we want to do is we want to learn a surrogate model that predicts for every configuration, so for every hyperparameter vector theta, predicts the performance, so the loss, as well as gives us a measure of uncertainty about our prediction. So loosely speaking, we are trying to model the probability of observing a given performance, performance y, given our hyperparameter theta. So this is what we want to do in sequential model-based optimization. So the idea is that we uh, repeatedly update the surrogate model as we observe new hyperparameter configurations as well as their performances. And then we use the surrogate model to select new promising configurations that we want to evaluate. Now, a specific instantiation of sequential model-based optimization is Bayesian optimization. And what is characteristic of Bayesian optimization is that we start off with some prior distribution. So we start off with some initial surrogate model. And as our data points come in, so as we try out more configurations and observe their performances, we update our beliefs about the loss surface. So we update our surrogate model. Now we can visualize this as follows. So suppose that we are trying to optimize a single hyperparameter, which we have displayed on the x-axis in this figure. Now also suppose that there is an objective function that we want to minimize. And this is displayed on the y-axis. Now, so also suppose that we have made some observations already. So these three red dots are what we have observed before. And then what we do in Bayesian optimization is we fit a surrogate model to these observations, which is going to predict the objective function value for the hyperparameter x. So suppose that we get a model that makes uh, these predictions. So the, the curve here is the mean and the shaded areas display our uncertainty about given points. And one thing to note is that at points at which we have directly evaluated or observed the real or underlying objective function, the uncertainty is zero. You see, so for each of these three points, our uncertainty there is very, very low or even zero. Now, and as we move further and further away from our observation, the uncertainty around our predictions actually increases, which is logical because we have not explored points in that area, and so we're not really sure what's going on in that part of the hyperparameter space. All right, now once we have the surrogate model, uh, we can now actually compute a acquisition function, which tells us how promising different areas of this hyperparameter space R. And once we have computed this, we can actually select new points accordingly. So what this would look like is we compute the acquisition function, which tells us how good uh, these hyperparameters are expected to be. So as you can see, the acquisition function is very high in between these points. Reason is that uh, we evaluated both of these points. They were actually quite good because they had a low loss or a low objective function. And therefore, this gets a pretty high acquisition function score. So this has a high expected quality. And what we also kind of see is that as the uncertainty increases, the acquisition function also tends to increase a bit. 
and this is especially visible also here. Now, what this kind of means is that the acquisition function is high in areas where we know that there are good performing models, but also high when we are uncertain. So this balances our exploitation, so exploiting our knowledge of good spaces or good regions in hyperparameter space, as well as exploration. So we want to explore points that are associated with quite some uncertainty. All right, but once we have computed this acquisition function, what we can do is we can simply evaluate the new hyperparameter configuration with the highest expected uh, quality estimate. So in that case, that would be uh, this point right here. And then what we do is we simply repeat this process. So once we have this new point, what we do is we update our surrogate model, so our predictions. We again compute an acquisition function. Then we again select the point with the highest expected quality score. And we repeat this process over and over again until we are satisfied with our performance or reach a certain budget in, in terms of computation time. So this is the idea of Bayesian optimization. Now, of course, the question that we still have to ask ourselves is, well, what kind of model can we actually use as a surrogate model? Now, one popular approach or popular technique is a random forest. And why is this popular? Well, because it can deal both with categorical hyperparameters. So these are hyperparameters that take on discrete values. For example, a Boolean flag, whether we want to use batch normalization in a neural network. So this is a Boolean variable, uh, which, which is not continuous and so has a categorical distribution. Now, in addition, it also allows us to work with conditional hyperparameters. So hyperparameters that are only defined if uh, some other hyperparameter is uh, or satisfies some constraints. So for example, suppose that we have a neural network and we have one hyperparameter that is the number of nodes in layer number three. Now for this hyperparameter to actually carry any meaning, we need to have the other hyperparameter value, which is the number of layers, to be larger or equal than three. Because otherwise this one hyperparameter does not make any sense, right? We cannot specify the number of nodes that we want in layer three if we only have two layers or one. See, so random forest allows us to actually work with both of these types of hyperparameters very easily. Now, another option is to use a Gaussian process. Now, this actually gives us very good confidence bounds, but this only works well with numerical hyperparameters. And it faces some challenges when you actually have categorical hyperparameters. There is no easy way to actually incorporate them. All right, so for the acquisition function, which is uh, kind of the quality estimate of the different hyperparameter configurations based on our surrogate model, uh, there's many different choices that you can make here for this. So for example, you could use the probability improvement, uh, entropy search, uh, UCB bounds, uh, and also the expected improvement, which is quite popular. And remember the goal of this function is really to compute how promising different configurations are based on our surrogate model. 